So what is the best way to address monkeypox from a public health perspective without causing panic or stigma? Dr. Jennifer Nuzzo is the inaugural director of the Pandemic Center at the Brown University School of Public Health and has been very active in this conversation. Dr. Nuzzo, people are tiptoeing around. They're scared to create stigma. They're scared to mess this up in some way. From a public health angle, how should we be talking about monkeypox and what are primarily gay men? Sure. Well, I think the first thing that we need to do and the, probably the most important thing we need to do right now is to educate patients and providers about what monkeypox is, what symptoms to be on the lookout for, and what to do if you experience symptoms or think you may have been exposed to it. Unfortunately, right now, there's still a dearth of knowledge on that front, um, and we're hearing about people having a hard time convincing their providers to test them for what they think is likely a monkeypox um, infection. So that's the first thing we can do. But in terms of reducing risk, I mean, I think we have to just send on the data and right now what we see is that um, disproportionately the cases are occurring right now in men who have sex with men and I think we have to be very clear about those data but also recognize that at some point in the future the data may change and we may be talking about um, types of exposures in a different way. How worried should gay men be because just like straight men some have tons of partners some are monogamous you know how worried should they be? Sure. Well, I think it's a hard question to answer sort of at a very high level, but as a general epidemiologic principle, sort of the more interactions you have with someone whose infection status you don't know, the higher the chance is that you may be exposed to the pathogen. And so I think just sort of factoring that into your decision making, I think, is key. I mean, that's something that we certainly did in COVID. The more exposures you had, the more likely it was that you would come in contact um, with the virus. And if you wanted to reduce your exposures, reducing the number of contacts you have is one way to do that. Regarding stigma, uh, we all know the history. Um, it, there is an age-old untrue stereotype of gay men being pedophiles. Now that we're seeing babies contracted, there's been some loose talk online, some implications like you see, aha, what was this, what was that? So from a public health angle, this does get a tiny bit tricky. How would you tackle that? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think those assertions are just disgusting, first of all, and we have absolutely no evidence in the data that that's happening. But we do have lots of evidence that when someone is infected in the home, the types of contacts that happen in household environments um, can result in transmission. That's not sexual contacts. That's just um, you are usually closer physically with your household members than you are with just people, you know, that you, you uh, meet in in public. Um, and so, you know, there is always a risk of household transmission of, um, you know, any virus, but certainly we have seen household transmission occur for monkeypox. And before this prior outbreak, that was, um, you know, a bulk of our secondary transmission happened um, in households. So um, what we have right now is, of course, a need to um, inform people who are diagnosed with monkeypox about what to do to um, reduce the likelihood that they're going to transmit it to others in their household. And that's the same stuff that we use for COVID to isolate yourself, you know, cover your rash, um, you know, try to um, be uh, cautious about surfaces that are being touched in the household, um, we see that as, you know, the, the more likely place to center on um, those contact messages. Dr. Jennifer Nuzzo with the Pandemic Center at Brown University. We really need doctors like you right now so much. Thank you, Dr. Nuzzo. Thanks for having me.